I want to say something up front here because I've been listening to all the people speaking and I've learned a ton from the, the incredible intelligence of the people that are up here. You are not going to learn anything from me at all. It's very basic, bare bones. I was talking to Chip yesterday, I met him, and I showed him some of the things I've done just because I'm so impressed with the company here and what they've done, and I'm trying to progress from stamp work into propeller work. And so I'm up here to learn as much as I can to do that. And in being so impressed with the company, I wanted to show him the things that I've used uh, basic stamps on. He thought you guys would enjoy seeing some of these things. So sort of inspirational, sort of interesting, and a different view of robotics or, or uh, vehicles. So I'll show you some pictures. One of the things I worked on, I uh, did a lot of stamp work for, was Spider-Man 2. And we built Dr. Octopus, at the company I worked for. And so all the mechanical things that we did for him were practical, which is opposed to um, not impractical, but a computer graphic effect that's not real, doesn't follow the laws of physics. We do practical effects, meaning these robots, these systems have to work and function. And in some of these instances, we needed to uh, have computer control. And the giant mainframe-style computers they were using to run these things was just ridiculous for what we had to do. So I offered to build some circuitry based on basic stamps to allow us to control these servos in a manner where they wouldn't break themselves and we could repeat the motion perfectly every time. And I went ahead and did that. And since then, I've been using them quite a bit on a lot of shows. This is CG. Those are CGI, the, those arms coming off his back. The rest of the, the uh, tentacle mechanism and his neck is real, and the, the girdle he has on is fine. This was something I built. It's a two-stage tentacle mechanism, uh, and the pins are actually functional. So as you see, it kind of curves back and forth. Let's go back to that. <coughs> the lower section curves as well, just like the top section. You can do them opposed to each other, so they do a wave-like motion. He would walk into it, and the, the servos controlled the rib case shutting, and then the stamps made all the little ribs, these chains in the end of the ribs, they would all latch into each other and then servos would move in and then the chain would get pulled and it would cinch down in the stomach, which was the shot uh, right before this. So this whole thing was servo stamp driven. Um, and I think I had a total of three or four stamps running this one. Fully functional and then this guy goes into his neck and then the pins go into his, into his skin and he winces and he's out. Uh, no, <laughs> not me. I mean, he was in pain, but um, they had to digitally remove the blood stains that were coming. Out. <laughs> you know, how this how this uh, fact was achieved was there was a the wires you see there the needles are actually uh, music wire and they're about 12 feet long. They follow in here. They make a little turn, go into a like a, like a housing like a, for a bike break on a bicycle. That little teeny housing, which is very very small, goes in through this piece, turns another corner, comes down here, meets all the other ones and all the other ones. They all come out. So I would pull a lever and make all those go in. And then to reset that, we would have to pull all the wires out independently, and then they would have a little curve to them, so we had to bend them all one at a time. We did that shot about 800 times, and I was ready to close it. And on the tips of his arms are these giant claws that open up in, in various configurations. Inside is a smaller set of fingers that pop out. They're kind of like human fingers with three joints, and they fold in to themselves and to unfold those, it's impossible for a human operator to do that. So the computer, the stamps, uh, were perfect for that. I mean, so this is the hand that would come out of the thing. And the stubby version, you can see like each section there between the two brass kind of pulleys on each one, that's the, the base of the finger. And then the two other sections of the finger are folded within that. All the motors, the servos are back here, somewhere about six feet. These again are cable housings and cables run through those. I use a basic stamp to take the signal from the touch screen translate that, put it into the trainer port of the radio, and use the radio as a modem. It transmitted to the uh, remote control receiver on this end. And then the stamp board would look at that control say, what do you want me to do? Okay, let's open the fingers. And before it would open them, it would make sure they were splayed open a bit, so that the fingers as they opened wouldn't collide, just put stress on the cables, possibly break them, or hurt the motors. So the stamp was a really, really essential part of this to make have safety considerations built in. So here's the uh, touchscreen controller showing the <coughs> The editing software, and here are the graphics coming up, showing the different stages of the uh, fingers. So you have the closed fingers, and here it's going to open up now. Touch the screen, and it immediately open. <laughs> so it pops open. So once it pops open, then it goes back to live control, and uh, the radio controls you're doing are going through the system, and this, it's going through the stamps. So this is just two channels on a radio controlling all six of these servos. So just two channels are making it go like that. We could build a telemetry glove so they'd be independent. The idea for this claw was not only grab his glasses or a cigarette he was going to have, but he was going to make these fingers come up into the upper position like a human hand in line, and he was going to play the piano like a 
crazy, mad scientist, you know, whatever. And so we had to make these fingers pop up. So in order to deploy that quickly, the stamp had to be involved. This is a triangular grasping technique, but if you have a, a ball, a spherical object in there, all six surfaces of these, like these two and these two, they can all grab the ball really nicely and hold it. But if you put a pipe across there, the top thing is going to hold it nicely, but just the top edge of these two are going to touch, it's going to be kind of loose. So we added some rotors in there, and you'll see how they make it into what I call the pipe grabbing mode. I mean, again, you touch the screen, it flips it over like that. Oh, right. Now we grab a pipe, a baseball bat, kill somebody, and do whatever. You're and so if, those today, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then if you want to play piano, you hit it again, and it goes up like that. You can play piano. <laughs> or you can slash at people, or whatever you want to do. So that's his. And then to transition between, if fingers are down like that, right there. If the fingers are down, well, in a downward position, and these outer two rotated down to that closed position, all the front of those fingers are going to collide. It's going to jam up the mechanism, it's going to hurt things. So when you, no matter what position it's in, the stamp knows that, and you'll see it, it'll flick them out to a safe position, bring them down around, and then it'll, it'll put them back to how you have them. <laughs> so it's really, it's instant, it's really quick, it's really, it's repeatable, and it's, it was really, really great. So this is the delivery device, uh, once again. There we go. Uh, this was building it in the, in the warehouse. I put a couple basic stamps inside of this as visual um, you know, in honor of parallax. So on the inside of this tentacle mechanism, on the inside there's like three or four stamps. I called in and asked for some broken stamps. They sent a pile of them. So I threw them in just as paying homage. And in these tentacles, there were uh, several giant servos, like quarter scale servos, hidden inside these tentacle things. And these ran up and made the rib cage shut and the little fingers shut over here. And then uh, cables run down somewhere in here, I can't see them, but that's where the wires came in for the needle effect. There's the needles that come in all through a little uh, junction box there. There's two of those. And there's a close-up of the, uh, the needles that go in. And here are the stamps. Right there. <laughs> Green BS2 is, is an honor. We added a bunch of extra red wires that don't do anything. <laughs> you need more LEDs flicking. I know. <laughs> just, yeah, LEDs make sure it's smart. And, uh, <laughs> and you can't hide in the dark because they see you. So all these little extra little gags. But as you can see, the needles don't come through those pads on his back. They go in and turn. And that was, a, that was actually a, a very stressful but very fun project. This is a, um, uh, a little robot I built. It's, it's a working transformer for a Commonwealth Bank in Australia. And this isn't the finished product. The inside is much more detailed with all these wires and little, tons of blinking LEDs all over it because that makes them work right. Um, yeah, and there was a little face with blinking lights and this whole thing. So it, it does this little routine. The idea for this commercial was uh, this bank is trying to pitch. This is a money bank for kids. They give them as, as a gift and to the kids to get, you know, it's like a toaster. And they said, well, we have a new version of this little money bank. Here it is. And they put it, the ad company puts it down on the table amongst the executives. And uh, it drives around, unfolds, and all this. And they go, oh, that's great. And then it goes, bzz, bzz, and sparks start shooting up. Then it catches on fire and spins around to the fire. And they go, yeah, thanks. We're going we're gonna to keep it fine. But, so we got to destroy that completely. Like within three feet, it's probably between you and I was where this thing was on fire, burning the battery packs and everything. And I'm the one that's, that's not good. <laughs> so here it is. This is a deployment test. It flips open, stands up, and this is run by a 2P40. You can see him right there. And he spins around, and then the head can look around. And so this was this wasn't a finished version, but like these these shells on the on the arm, they all are sprung low, they fold back out of the way, and there's all kinds of detail all over the blinking lights. There's like a weird face on here. Um, and his legs, he can actually sidestep and walk around. And he also has wheels that modify two servos in the bottom, and then it, uh, the continuous, so he can actually drive around and walk whatever he wants to do. And then he catches on fire and dies. <laughs> so, anybody has any more questions? Or? Thank you.